Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.8 and DECA Ironworks Simulations JF17 Thunder Module. Welcome to tutorial 14, GPS Guided Munitions. We've already covered the air-to-ground guided missiles that the aircraft can carry, and the laser-guided bombs, so now we're on to the two types of precision-guided munition uh, that the aircraft can carry that use GPS guidance. These are the LS-6, which is in effect uh, Chinese uh, JDAM, and the GB-6, which is uh, a Chinese version of a JSO. And I've got both of these loaded on the aircraft right now. Uh, so with the JSO, of course, being a glide bomb, um, there are three versions available for the JF-17. There is the standard version, which I have loaded onto the aircraft just now, which contains uh, explosive cluster bomblets. So it will pass over the target and dispense a whole bunch of bomblets. There's a version marked as HE, and in the HE version, uh, it's simply filled with explosives. <laughs> so the glide bomb will strike the target and explode. And then there's a version marked SFW, and that's a sensor-fused weapon. That version will drop bomblets, which will automatically detect armoured targets and fire uh, penetrators. Uh, down through their top armor, so uh, very uh, similar to some of the cluster munitions that the uh, the Western powers field. So three different versions of the GB6. There's only a single version of the LS6, uh, which is the the JDAM. It's uh, it's marked as a 500 kilo weapon, uh, which in uh, American parlance would equate to something around about 1,000 pounds. Um, so that's uh, that's what that is. Um, both of these can be dropped in target of opportunity or pre-planned modes, uh, with target of opportunity just being your current sensor point of interest uh, and pre-planned mode making use of the PP points that your INS can store. So you have PP points 1 to 4, they correspond to waypoints 36 to 39, as I've demonstrated before. The LS-6 can be carried singly on your inner and outer wing pylons. Those are pylons 6, 5, 3, and 2. The GB-6, because it's considerably larger and heavier, can only be carried singly on the inner pylons, as demonstrated here, and those are 5 and 3. So if you wanted to carry both, what I'm demonstrating just now is the maximum loadout for that. Um, there's not really any uh, pre-setup before getting in the air. Uh, the only thing that we would perhaps do is create the PP points, but I'll demonstrate that in the air. Uh, I will demonstrate deploying these weapons both in pre-planned and target of opportunity modes. So, uh, I'll get the aircraft started up and I'll see you en route to the range. Okay, you rejoin me in the cockpit after I've started up the aircraft and we're en route to the range. Um, so let's uh, first demonstrate launching the GB-6, that's the glide bomb, the JSO equivalent. Um, it's possible to launch this in target of opportunity and pre-planned modes. I'm going to demonstrate pre-planned first, uh, because I've already programmed a PP point. So I've, I've programmed PP point 1, that's, uh, that's the only point you can actually hand off to the GB-6 and the LS-6, unfortunately. Uh, so you need to make sure that PP point 1 is always programmed if you're going to do um, a, a pre-planned attack with these weapons. So if I take a little look at my destination page, I can see uh, waypoint 36, and I've already inputted coordinates into that. The way you do that, by the way, I, I'll do pre-planned point two. Uh, you just click the arrow here and enter. In my case, I did 36 for pre-planned point one. Let's do 37. It's then gonna be blank and flashing, indicating that this is a new one. You simply click this line here and enter your northing. Click this, oh, uh, and then you can click the second line and enter your easting. It actually wouldn't let me come out without entering something. So I've just backed all the way out of that. Uh, and if I go to three, oops, if I go to three, six, okay, I think I've just found a bug. <laughs> It's now flashing like mad at me. Uh, we're going to ignore that for just now. That's clearly a bug. I'll need to report that in the forums. Uh, but I have pre-planned point one ready in any case. So let's go over here and take a little look at the weapon. Um, if I go T1 switch aft to put the aircraft into air-to-ground mode, it by default selects GB6. 
Uh, I'm now going to go down here and go Master Arm on. The weapon is now powering on. It currently indicates flashing standby. And now armed. Uh, mode, target of opportunity. Let's cycle that to PP. Weapon, GB6. When I want to switch to the LS6, I could simply click this and then select LS6. But we're going to stick with the GB6 just now. Uh, I could choose a quantity. I can do them singly or double. Uh, I'm going to drop them singly just now because I want to demonstrate both modes. We have direct fusing or delayed fusing. I'm going to leave it on direct. And you can also set your break altitude. But for a weapon like this, it doesn't really make any sense. Uh, you're not going to be diving towards your target with a glide bomb. Uh, on the right hand side, let's bring up our HSD. On the HSD, you've got some indications here showing you a bunch of stuff. Uh, this slightly closer diamond is actually our pre-planned point. Let me see if I can bring the range. No, I can't bring the range down properly. That's our pre-planned point. Uh, the next diamond is actually the waypoint. Um, this line shows you the route that the glide bomb is going to take. When this line is dashed, you're out of range. When this line is solid, as it is now, you're in range. And this circle is to show you where it's going to have terminal effect. Um, I don't know if that makes much sense with this particular version of the weapon, but let, let's see in any case. But yeah, it, it's showing you roughly where the weapon is going to deploy. So solid line means we are actually ready to drop this right now. So let's do that. Uh, let's go back up to the HUD. And yeah, just to confirm in the HUD left hand side, we have confirmation of the weapon, GB6, its state, it's ready, master mode, air to ground, and mode of employment pre-planned range to target, closure rate, and so on, all the usual stuff. So let's bring the aircraft out of active pause and let's push and hold pickle. Okay, GBU away. Let's take a little look at F6. You can see the weapon has deployed its little, its little wings as soon as it came off the pylon. There's our smoky, smoky JF-17. <laughs> and it's diving now towards the target. Let's see what kind of an effect we get with this. Can accelerate time a little bit just to get this there a bit quicker. Range of the weapon, as always, will vary based on launch altitude and speed. Of course, the higher and faster you can go, the longer range at which you're going to be able to drop this. You don't get a DLZ or anything like that, sadly, with this weapon. Uh, the only thing you're going to get... Huh, that was a really weird way for it to impact. Why did it do that? It dived towards the ground. Maybe those are the coordinates I entered. It could be a mistake on my part. So, um, yes, uh, you're going to get more range if you launch higher and faster. Right, let's do that again. But this time, we're going to enter into target of opportunity mode. This works in exactly the same way. The only difference that we're going to have here is that uh, it's going to attack our current sensor point of interest. I actually just recognized what I probably did wrong there. Uh, my pre-planned point had an elevation of zero. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure elevation here is not zero. So that's my mistake. Keep in mind elevation is important. So anyway, we're going to pod. We're going to WMD7. I'm going to designate a target based on my targeting pod on this occasion. You could do the same thing using the radar. So, oh, okay. I didn't realize that I hadn't already aligned my pod. That's going to take a couple of moments to do that. Uh, we're currently flying away from the target area, and then we're going to turn around. So let's get this up and running. Uh, actually, while that's doing its... Uh, built-in self-test, I will get the aircraft ready to come back around again. So, autopilot off. Let's uh, accelerate a little bit. A lot of trimming needed after launching one of those things. They're very big and very heavy. There we go. Trim's almost right now. Uh, I'm going to go outbound until about 20 nautical miles I think that's going to be enough space for me to come around and then make another attack okay pod is now aligned so let's uh, slave it to waypoint one uh, it's masked just now by the aircraft but that's okay uh, actually we probably have enough space now let's come out of burner and let's bring it around.
There we go. We're now facing the right way. Let's get the aircraft stabilized. Autopilot on. And now let's focus back down here. So that should be my target area. I'm going to go uh, S1 switch to the right to make this my sensor of interest. S2 switch forward to uh, bring me in. There we go. Let's uh, depress the TDC. I now have a lock. That is my target of opportunity. Uh, I'm actually going to switch this side to show the HSD so I can see my range information. Solid line. We are in range and ready to go. So let's push and hold pickle. GB6 is away. It's off the rail and it's steering. Wings are out. And let's once again accelerate time. See what this chappy does. Hopefully this time because I've used a laser to designate a point on the ground this will actually be more effective. Let's see what it does. That's the target that I wanted it to hit. That's looking better. Boom! And boom! Oh wow! Okay, okay. Much better. <laughs> so, so everybody, the importance of defining the elevation of your target demonstrated as clearly as I ever could. Um, that is what it should have looked like. Fantastic. Okay, now what we're going to do, um, it's... It's a little bit redundant because they work in exactly the same way, but let's do it anyway. Let's switch weapon profile now to the LS-6. They're now powering on. We're in target of opportunity. I'm going to leave it in target of opportunity, actually. They're armed and ready. So yeah, mode TOO, weapon LS-6, fusing, direct. Again, we have direct or delayed. Um, this, of course, is a bomb, so it's going to directly impact the target rather than dropping bomblets, as the GB-6 did there. Uh, and another quick note again, you know, the GB-6 has three variants. That was the cluster variant. There is also the high explosive variant, which is basically a bomb, and the sensor-fused weapon variant, which is very, very good at destroying tanks. Um, again, quantity one or two, and you have your break altitude, but you're never going to use that. So... We're flying outbound from the target. Let's get that range to a nice point. Actually, that's already a pretty nice range. So let's pop off the autopilot and we're going to come around. My trim is all wrong again, of course. There we go. We've got eyes on the target, rolling out on target. And uh, as before, I'm going to bring up my HSD. And it's showing a solid line. So we are in range. Let's uh, GB away. That's one off. Pop on the autopilot again. And let's see what this chappy does. So these are quite funny, it, much like the um, the JDAM weapons that the, the Western powers employ, this is a standard bomb that a kit has been applied to. And in the case of these kits, it's a tail kit with the guidance and a glide kit, which is like a strapped on set of wings. Um, so it's pretty cool. These potentially have a greater range than the Western JDAMs because they do actually have, uh, you know, lift generating surfaces. Um, so they are kind of miniature glide bombs. This one, as I said before, is in the thousand pound class. Let's see what we get here. Looks on target. We should get a direct strike from this. And this is a big bomb. This is going to make a mess. There we go. That was spot on. That's exactly what we hope for. Okay, so let's uh, jump back over to the SMS page. And we're going to do our final drop, this time in pre-planned mode. So as before, that's going to hit pre-planned point number one. That's uh, waypoint 36. You can see it's uh, it's got a solid line, but it's behind us. So uh, actually, let's just recage this so it's not distracting us. Uh, and actually, let's... Uh, doesn't really matter what we have on this screen. I just, I just wanted to take that off so that it's not distracting me. Okay, 
Just gonna get my view set up. There we go. Good to go. Autopilot off. Let's um, bring her around the other way and get a launch. There we go. We're now in parameters and in range. Pickle. Okay. No problem. <laughs> and then this one should attack the other bomb circle. Let's uh, accelerate time because this is going to look exactly the same as the other one. Uh, just to recap, this is pre-planned mode. I'm attacking pre-plan point number one. Oh, and of course this is going to miss because we still didn't set our elevation. Well, if anything, this is a second demonstration of why elevation is important. Boom! At least that one actually went off with the GB6 because it drops bomblets. It didn't even go off because the, the casing of the glide bombs smacked into the ground before it was able to deploy them. Excellent. Okay, so that is a demonstration of GPS-guided munitions in the JF-17. There are, as I said, two types. The LS-6, which is effectively a JDAM, it's a thousand pound class weapon, and the GB-6, which is a larger glide bomb like a JSO with various different options for what it can contain. Uh, I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.